Hi everyone, coming up today we've got some online safety advice, another poem for the day, and how to cook your favourite pizza swirls. Hi everyone, this is Mr Hughes here, and uh, I'm going to share with you my top five tips for how to be safe online. Most of them are fairly obvious, but also we know that they make a big difference. So number one, really obvious, hide your personal details. Don't tell the whole world your full name, your age, date of birth, certainly not your address. Okay, people can use it, they can impersonate your identity, they can piece things together to try and have, find out more about you. Um, so the more you keep secret, the better. Okay, pick a good pseudonym. Um, also, you know, good idea not to post pictures of yourself in your school uniform, bottle greens, pretty easy to identify. There aren't that many schools have it. Um, you know, and it just helps people track you down. Uh, number two, really obvious, turn off location settings. If you leave location settings turned on on your uh, tablet, like your iPad or your phone, um, then when you take pictures or when you post, people can find out where you are. That means they can very quickly find out where you live, where you might be on holiday. Um, you know, for a whole host of reasons, it's just not safe and it's better unless you need it for a weather app or something like that. You know, keep them turned off. Number three, again, really obvious. If you get a message with links and it looks dodgy or just too good to be true, it probably isn't, okay? it's probably fake, in which case ignore it or delete it. Um, at the moment with the coronavirus, there's loads of um, increases in phishing attempts um, and you may get you know, fake emails from all sorts of companies, often spelt bad or they just don't look right, um, because they're not. So just ignore them, delete them, don't respond. Number four, be careful who you trust online. Um, people that you know, are online predators, they, they do this for, you know, all the time. They are incredibly good at knowing how to talk to people. Um, they're often trying to groom thousands of people at the same time. So they're, they're very good at knowing how to appear to have the same interests, how to be your friends. Okay, so just be sensible. Um, you know, if something sounds odd, you know, flag it up with people, report it. Just stick to people that you know or friends of friends, um, but just be careful. And lastly, really obvious one, Please follow the advice on social media age restrictions. It's there for a reason. Um, you know, some apps have a lot of content um, meant for older people, or we know they're more likely to induce risks. Please, you know, avoid them. Um, so those age restrictions are there for a reason, and you know, please do follow it. Thank you. We'll post more soon. And now sit back and relax for poem of the day as Mr. Andrews reads the Jabberwocky. The Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. Twas brilliant on the slithy toves that guile and gimble in the wave. All menzy where the borrow grows and the mountain grass outgrave. Beware the Jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the maximum foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree and stood a while in thought. And, as if in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Your frab just day, kaloo kalee. He chortled in his joy. Twas brilliant in the slithy toes. Did gyre and gimble. All mincy and the bottles, and the mom rats out grave.
and lastly Mrs Wildman from DT is going to show you how to make pizza swirls. One of the uh, favourites that everyone likes are pizza swirls. So this is what we're going to end up with. So come and have a look at this and I'm going to show you. <coughs> okay, so um, depending on who you've got at home, you may have uh, people who have got allergies and this is one allergy uh, that some of you might have. This is um, something I've bought for somebody who is gluten free. So it's a puff pastry and you can make pizza swirls using puff pastry. And this one is a gluten free version. And um, if you haven't got, because I know what the shops are like at the moment, if you haven't got uh, one of these ready made things, then I'm going to show you how to make your own. So come and have a look at this. To make the basic pastry, you need 250 grams of self-raising flour, 50 grams of butter, and 150 ml of milk. Any milk will do. So here we go. I've weighed them, uh, the flour and the butter, and we're just going to do a basic method. So I'll get rid of the scales, and this one is just a simple rubbing in method. Now it goes without saying that I've washed my hands, and uh, what do they say? Sing happy birthday twice, good at least 20 seconds. So when you do this, let's just go some soya milk here, but you can use skim milk, semi-skimmed milk. Now it's 150 millilitres. Now I'm going to add most of it, always be cautious when you're adding liquid. And then we're going to do, with a table knife, we're just going to do a figure of eight. And we're going to try and coat figure of eight like this until all of the so-called breadcrumbs have been coated. And then we're going to use our common sense because when you're at home, um, once you've got permission to actually do some cooking, I've got every confidence in you, you'll be able to do this. And then just do a little bit of a pinch test. If it comes together, that's great. If you feel it needs a little bit more liquid, just add a little bit more just to bring it together. And we'll see where that takes us. So we'll just bring it all together now into a bowl. Now if you've got time, you would be best to pop this into the fridge and just let it chill. And you could use that, you could make a soup with it, maybe we'll do that another day. But what we've got here, I just want to, a little bit of that inner part here. So I'm just going to make a claw and just take off a little bit of the leek. And just, that will give me a hint of an onion flavour. So again, let's just take it into nice little pieces like this, so that it will roll really nicely. We also want to think about flavourings, don't we? So if any of you happen to have a jar of mixed herbs or um, something like that, then that would be great to actually put in there as well. So there you have it. I'm going to have my pizza swirls today. I made up with a little bit of red pepper, some mushrooms and uh, a little bit of leek just to give that onion flavour. Yeah. To put our fillings on. So think of this like a pizza. I'm going to put maybe a combination of a little bit of ketchup and I'm going to put a little bit of sweet chilli sauce on here. Best thing about being off school at the moment is you can be as creative as you want. So in the back of a spoon, just spread this around like this and Remember, especially with something like sweet chilli, there's quite a lot of sugar in that, so don't go crazy. You just want a little bit of everything on here, just to add a little bit of flavour. If you put too much on, all that sugar will burn quite easily in the oven. There you go. That's fine. Now let's build up. So we'll start with some mushrooms. Just pop a few on, I bet some of you have pulled a face there because you don't like mushrooms. But if you do them small enough, you're not going to actually taste them too much. Okay, handful of peppers, we'll pop those on like this. You can put 
different colour peppers on here, couldn't you? And then lastly, just an absolute sprinkle of those lovely leeks. Like that. Okay. Now I've got uh, all sorts of uh, different food needs in uh, my household. So if you have, like me, got somebody who's gluten free or somebody who's dairy free, with the cheese you can always divide this. So I'm going to put some normal cheese, some cheddar cheese on half of these, like so. And then on this side, I'm going to put some dairy free cheese and we'll see what they look like. Last little bit, um, just to get a little bit of further um, colour in here. This is spinach, spinach leaves. And you literally can just pull those, shred them with your fingers, and they'll just add a little bit more colour. Right, here's the fun bit now. So, when we um, have finished with our topping, we've got our baking tray ready with something to stop it sticking. I've used parchment. And then we're just going to start with the long side nearest your tummy and just lift it up. Now, keep, I'll say to you again, try and lift the dough because if you push it, all your toppings are going to fall off. So here we go, we're just going to lift it, lift it, and try and keep it nice and neat. You might need a friend, or um, not a friend, a brother or a sister. Yeah, I forgot there, we can't talk to friends, can we? We can't have them around. And just do um, something like that. Do you want to see Finn? Finn's come to see us. Okay, say hi Finn. <laughs> okay, back to this. And this is nearly our masterpiece. So we've got a nice roll there, like so. And we're just going to cut these pizza swirls into finger widths. So let's start with the first one. And if you use a sharp knife, this one here, that's the one that we're going to taste. That's cook's privilege, because that, that one's always on the end. And then you'll start to get beautiful swirls. So I've got to remember which side. I'm going to take a good look at these gluten-free ones and see whether they're ready. So come and have a look, come a bit closer. Okay. Make sure you put your oven gloves on. Pull out the shelf and have a closer look, come a bit closer. You can see what we're looking for. So these are gluten-free. And then we've got some normal cheddar cheese ones here, we'll pop them just on the end, like that, maybe one more on there, and a little bit of garnish just to finish it all off. Right, there we go, so today we've got pizza swirls, we've got gluten free, dairy free, and we have also got a nice cheddar cheese there one. One last tip for you, don't forget all the recipes are on deferris.com. Search for Key Stage 3 Recipes in the DT section. And of course, if you don't like savoury pizza swirls, why don't you make some sweet swirls? So, jam would be a good suggestion. So if you've got some jam, or I've got a little bit of sweet mincemeat here, and you could use some of that in your pizza swirls or sweet swirls. Enjoy, keep sharing the DT love. Bye for now.